Hello and welcome to Library Drawing Party. Today we're going to be drawing this baseball figure. To get started, we're going to work on the helmet first. So I'm taking my number two pencil and I'm going to draw a half circle that comes all the way around. So almost like we're making a giant C. And then I'm going to do another half circle that connects to it. And then another half circle here. So you see, this is the the head. And then we'll add in that cap shape. In the helmet. And there's also a small circle at the top. Now once you have the helmet drawn, you're going to want to take a step back. I want to adjust the side a bit. Okay, now for the face, I'm just going to hint at the face by drawing a half circle connecting the cap pieces. It's going to actually extend down. We're not going to really see the face. Because of the angle that the baseball player is standing in. I'm going to have a little line for the neck. And that's going to connect to the face. We do a half circle around there. And then for the shirt, we're going to have a collar, which is going to have this line. Now because he's turned at an angle, or she, because we can't see the face, this is not going to be perfect. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of movement in the shirt. So we're going to have lumps and bumps that are actually really just air. But we need them so that we can show how he's turned. So I'm working on the shoulders right now. And then let's draw the arm. So there's some muscle here, but it's also just the way that the shirt is turned. And then let's draw the under shirt. This is where the elbow is going to be. We want to make it defined. Nice point for the elbow. The thing about drawing people is we see people every day. So we know if something looks right or not. So as you're going along, you're going to want to check, take a step back, make sure that it looks right to you. And if it doesn't, then just make adjustments. Everybody's going to be different though. So you might have a taller player or a shorter player. As long as the bones look like they should be in the right spot. That's the main thing. That's why artists spend so much time looking at human anatomy. Because you want to know where the bones and the muscles fall. So you know where to give shading and highlights. 
All right, so I drew the arm. I wanna draw the circle that comes around the shoulder here for the, the way that the shirt is designed. You see this white line. I wanna draw that now. And then let's work on the arm from the other side. So the shirt actually needs to come up a bit because it goes into the face. So let me adjust this. I like to start with the face because that's the most important feature of a human. You see their emotions, what they're thinking, why they're doing a certain action. So we're not going to actually see the face, but I started with the head. So we know that just from the angle of the helmet, we know that the player is looking at the bat to see the ball, the baseball that's coming. And we want to get the gloves. And some of our other drawings, we use the grid technique. You could definitely use that technique here. So what you could do if you're making this for a baseball player in your family, you could take a picture of one of their games, print it out to the size that you want. So if you want like a five by seven picture or a four by six picture, just make sure that the image that you print out is that size. And then you can draw the grid over the picture. So if the, that's the only picture you're having and I want to make a copy of it so you can draw on it. Now for this baseball player, his arms are a little longer than in my sample drawing, so the bat is going off the page. It'll actually help keep the viewer's interest by moving their focus to the outer edges of the page. Then I'm going to go back to working on the shirt. So for the grid technique, you're drawing someone you know and you have their photograph. You make a copy, you draw the grid lines. I like to do inch grid lines and then if you really want to get more detail, you can do half inch grid lines. So you draw the inch across on both sides and draw the lines and then you draw the half inch lines in between that. We worked on a few of our drawings previously using that technique so you can look back in those drawings if you're using the grid technique for this particular drawing. Use the belt. Now the belt is going to be a little bit smaller than the shirt because the shirt's got the air in it from the movement so the belt is going to be close to the body. And then there's the buckles. And I'll draw a little bit of shading in but we're going to add more with our color. And then let's take a step back. Now something I noticed when I took a step back is that the belt is actually in an angle and we want the belt to be straight across because we want to show that the player is grounded. So I'm going to add in some more wrinkles. And then add in 
Buckles. Take another step back. That looks better. It helps to know why the baseball player is moving the way that he or she is moving because it'll help you draw more accurate picture. So if you really wanted to get further in your baseball drawing, it would be good to talk to somebody who is a baseball player themselves. If you're not one already, and ask them about the movements or baseball enthusiast might be able to tell you why the player is moving the way that he or she is moving on the field so that you can better describe that in your picture. So right now I'm working on the legs. So this front leg is mostly straight. See, this bone is going to be straight down, which is why we adjusted the belt because it's grounded in the earth. And then there's a slight turn here because the, as the player turns, their knee moves. Now, I drew a slightly larger baseball player here than I did in my sample drawing. So, not all of the leg is going to be shown. But that's fine. That's another reason why we start with the face or head, because then we know where our focus is going to be, which is right here, right in the movement of the bat. And then let's draw the back leg. So that's going to be facing forward. And that's also going to be getting cut off. And then there's a bit of shadow here. I'll just hint at that right now. And then we have this pinstripe, which is not going to be a straight line because we got to get all the wrinkles of the pants. So you're going to want to add in some curves, especially down towards the knee. And then let's add in some pant pockets and then some wrinkle lines from the turn. Another good idea is to work from a live model. So if you go to baseball games, you can try and draw this while they're playing or if you watch baseball on TV. You can try that as well. Once you have your figure drawn, let's add in the logo. Now, I am drawing Lawrence because I'm from the Lawrence branch. So I'm supporting our Lawrence team. Now, the letters are going to be skewed because we're seeing it at an angle so it's not going to look exactly the way that it should we just want to hint 
enough at the letters that we can guess what it is we're looking at. Move my shoulder in a bit here so that I can fit the E. And then there's the banner and then I did 27 but I'm gonna do a different number on this one I'm gonna do 51 so this number is gonna be a little bit smaller because of the perspective It gets smaller and then it gets bigger. And then I want to have this angled a bit. And let's do the one. And you can make this the number and logo of your favorite team or player. And take a step back and if you're happy with your player then you're gonna want the catcher's mitt in the background so my drawing that's a couple inches away you want the proportion to be a few feet away and since I did more of a close-up here this is also going to be more of a close-up so we're going to lose the arm but if you're adding the arm in your drawing it's just going to be a rectangle and then you just want to make sure you're drawing the glove so you're going to have that black line for the glove or whatever color you're choosing for your team and then I'm going to take my ruler I'm going to draw in the baseball field and it should go halfway through the catcher's mitt. Now this is actually going to be pulled up from my sample drawing because I'm doing the close-up. It's just going to make the player look a little shorter. So just be, be careful of that when you're drawing. And let's draw the white line. Okay, now for the coloring. I'm going to use colored pencils for this because there's a lot of exact shapes that I want to convey. So the Lawrence colors is red and black. So I'm going to be drawing red. And I'm leaving some white for the collar. And then our letters are going to be in white, so I'm just going to draw around them. And the letters, like we said before, they're not going to be perfect because we're at an angle. So don't worry about if you color over a bit. And I'm also going to leave that white line around the shoulder. And if you're trying to create a specific team look, you're going to want to look at sample photos if you're not doing a live drawing to see what their colors are, how the shirts are shaped, if they have any embellishments. Even the font of the numbers can be important. 
Okay, once I have my red drawn, I'm going to take my black. I'm going to outline the numbers a bit. So I'll help them stand out. And also emphasize the collar and put a little shadow around the shoulder and under the shoulder. Then we'll put some wrinkles in the shirt to show the movement. And put some shadow underneath the letters. And go around the shirt a bit. Just to smooth it out a little. Okay. And next up, I'm going to work on the helmet. So the helmet's going to be all black. Keep it from being one color. I'm going to make it grayish and then use the true black to help give it some texture and some shadow. You're going to want to use that half circle line for this so that we keep that nice circular shape. And then we'll do the cap. Do the undershirt. And let's put an outline around the gloves. Let's take black for the belt. And let's take the red for the pinstripe. You can just color right over the line that we drew. And the line will actually help give it some shadow. And I'm going to draw in the skin color. And you can use other colors to blend it. Now for the bat, I'm going to take sandy color. And you want to draw horizontal lines to show the wood grain. I'm going to take that brown and add in some color. And I use a peach tone to blend it all up. And let's outline pants a bit. Take a step back. If you're happy with your drawing, then you can do it. The catcher's mitt. This is going to be brown. And I want the focus to be on the player, so I'm not going to be as detailed here. But you can choose to make this very detailed. Now I'm going to blend color with the sand color. And I'm going to do a second coat of brown. Mix it all up. Then 
Add in some lines. And I'm going to draw in the black of the glove. There you have our catcher's mitt. Now, you can do watercolors for this next step, but I liked the texture, especially in the grass of the colored pencils, so I'm just going to use colored pencils. I'm going to use the sand color. I'm going to follow the diagonal line that we drew. And take some brown, mix that in, and then I'll blend it with orange. Just because the sand in the baseball field is never going to be just one color. Okay. Then let's do that down at the bottom. Okay, and then for the shading, I'm going to use the brown. And I want these lines to be horizontal. The contrast to our diagonal line. Then I'll put in some orange. Then I'm going to blend it with the sand color. And then finally, I'm going to take my green and draw diagonal lines across with varying thicknesses. And weights. So some parts are going to be lighter and some parts are going to be darker. That shows the texture of the grass. Since the grass is going to be mostly smooth and baseball field. But some parts are going to be darker and some parts are going to be lighter. You can also paint a watercolor base under this and then draw lines over top to get your texture. I want to be careful when you're going around the figure that you don't accidentally draw over it so you might want to draw smaller lines there and then draw your larger strokes. You still want to keep it diagonal as much as possible. And some dark lines here. And down at the bottom. Then I'm going to draw a second coat over top. Help blend the colors in a bit. And since this is a nice manicured baseball field, I'm going to be using green exclusively in the field. You can also use brown or more of the sand color 
in your fields help give it that natural grassy look. We still don't want to lose our patches of light and dark. So you don't want to try and keep that as you're blending in the colors. We just want to lose the white background. And there you have it. That's our baseball player. Thank you for joining us in this week's library drawing party. We have library drawing parties every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And keep being creative.